Alleluia, Shalom, greetings in Jesus' matchless name. I have a very, very special word <clears throat> that the Lord laid upon my heart uh, and I want to share with you very quickly. I want you to turn your attention to one of the epistles that Jesus himself made, his apostle John Wright, to one of the seven churches. <clears throat> You know, the letters, the epistles that Jesus himself made right to those uh, seven churches, ancient seven churches, are very, very profound. And the first letter that Jesus uh, made John write was his epistle written to the church at Ephesus. Let me read a few verses from the book of Revelation. Chapter 2, and beginning from verse number 1. <clears throat> This is what the Lord himself says. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth up the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlestick. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst bear them that are evil. <clears throat> and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and thou hast borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love how glorious it is that jesus is reprimanding this church strongly only for one thing, and that is the abandonment of the first love. Do you know that Jesus is a living person? We are supposed to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. We must love him. Jesus longs to receive love from your heart he longs to receive love from you is your heart transmitting love towards him you know ephesus <clears throat> in the ancient times was a very very significant city it was a cosmopolitan city situated on the bank of the aegean sea it was a seaport and a hub of commerce. And, and this city was replete with multiple cultures. The city saw the Roman culture, the Greek culture, and so many ancient philosophies were upon the mind of the inhabitants of the city. If you <clears throat> delve deeper into the history, when Jesus was hung on the cross, he looked at his mother and then he looked at his disciples who used to lean upon his bosom. <laughs> he said to the apostle, your mother, and he looked unto his mother, saying, mother, your son. If you um, look into the history deeper, you find after listening to the words of the Lord Jesus and after his glorious resurrection, John, the beloved apostle, took the mother of the Lord unto himself. And history reveals that John and Jesus' blessed mother, they moved to the city of Ephesus. In Ephesus, you can still find, you know, archaeology has found all the traces of Jesus' mother and John uh, having lived a long period of time towards the end of their life there. In fact, there is a church which is uh, after the name of Mother Mary. John was one of the founding pastors in the city. And if you look into the epistle that Paul the Apostle wrote to this church, it is absolutely loaded with profound spiritual truths. One of the most <clears throat> profound and deepest epistle written in the New Testament was written to the church at Ephesus. This city, this city was very divergent. 
there was a there was an ancient temple of goddess Ermitia, Amitis, or in Latin you call Diana, and also another temple of goddess Nico, from where you get the word Nike, goddess of victory. So this city had very powerful cultural, religious, philosophical influence. We find Paul the Apostle, one of the greatest missionaries of the New Testament. He spent three years of his life here. You find that record in Acts of the Apostles chapter number 20, where Paul says when he is you know, having a farewell and he is headed to go to Jerusalem, and in his spirit, he knows what awaits for him in, the, in Jerusalem. He, 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 he addresses the elders, the deacons, and <clears throat> the important leadership of the church at Ephesus. He says, Here, hereafter, you're not going to see my face. Then he says, you know that all these three years with tears I have sowed among you. And I never relent, relented to teach you the whole counsel of God. Paul did not, you know, pick up one fragment of the gospel and taught the church like some would only teach one fragment of prosperity gospel or maybe the healing element. He says, I taught you the whole counsel of God, church of Jesus of Nazareth in these last days in the es eschatological order needs to know the whole counsel of God. Paul did teach the church at Ephesus the whole counsel of God. And Paul says, I prayed for you diligently and I delivered unto you what Christ gave me and now I am free from your blood. Then Paul, through the prophetic eyes, could see what was going to happen to the church. He says, after I depart, ravenous wolves are going to come among you. You see, this church was loaded with so many spiritual deep gifts. Paul writes so many profound spiritual insights in his epistle to the church. And we also find if in the history, when Paul was in the prison, the second prison, he comes across a young man whose name was Onesimus. You find the record in the epistle that Paul wrote in the name of Philemon. Very, very profound little tiny letter in the New Testament. It carries a glorious saga of God's redemptive love in that epistle. This young man <clears throat> was a beggar -wound. He ran away, stealing some stuff from his master. And his master's name was Philemon. Philemon was a very, very rich person who came to know the Lord through the ministry of Paul the Apostle. And Apostle Paul established a church in his home. So there was a house church in the, in the house of uh, Philemon. And uh, this guy whose name was Onesimus, he was in the jail. Paul meets him in the jail. Paul did preach to the jail inmates and there might have been a great revival. Many, many might have come to the Lord. One of this, one, one of those, uh, you know, jail inmates, his name was Onesimus. He turned to the Lord. When he turned to the Lord, gave his heart to the Lord, Paul the apostle, after hearing his story, when this guy was released from the jail, he wrote a letter with his own hand and he gave it into the hands of Onesimus. And he told him, go and give this letter to Philemon. Philemon doesn't own you as a slave now. You are no more criminal to him now. Go back to him. He restored <clears throat> his servant to the master. He said, go back, but now you are going as a brother in the Lord. You know, that epistle that Paul wrote is glorious. Paul says, now he is no more your slave, but he is your fellow brother in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive him as you would receive me. And Paul says, whatever he owes you, write in my account. Hallelujah. What a wonderful man Paul the Apostle was. Hallelujah. And how, how beautifully these guys, the early apostles, were restoring people. Hallelujah. And they were bringing the, 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 the plan of God of redemption in their day-to-day -day life. It was touching every aspect of their life. 
and we find in history that Onesimus later on became one of the powerful bishops of the church at Ephesus. Hallelujah. But see what Jesus is <clears throat> making John write to the church. Perhaps towards the end of first century, perhaps after 30 or 25 years, this is what Jesus is making Paul write to the church. He says, he says, nevertheless, I have something against thee because thou hast left thy first love. You know, Jesus did appreciate this church for a few things. But one thing that was so powerful for Jesus was the church loving him. Hallelujah. The bride loving the bridegroom. He's saying you abandoned your first love, your first passion, your zeal, the way you walked with him, the way you cherished him above any, above all other things that pertain to life. Hallelujah. And how <clears throat> you were on fire for him, the zeal that you had for him, the deep-seated madness for him that you had. Jesus is saying you left that. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, does your heart burn with fire for Jesus? Do you truly, truly, deeply love him? Hallelujah. Are you madly in love with Jesus? Or are you caught up? Are you caught up in the drudgery of so-called religious churchianity and Christianity? Do you love the man Jesus? The person of Jesus. He is a real person. He's alive. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you have that engaging day-to-day -day relationship with him? Sometimes your ministry could become a very dead drudgery for you. Could become a that deadly trap of the enemy. Break every hold by the power of his blood. Every bar, everything that incarcerates you, come out, meet him, encounter him, fall in love with him. You know how strong it is for Jesus that we have engaging love with him on uh, in a in a day to day life. It is so. So, so significant for Jesus. So much so that he says, <clears throat> he says, <clears throat> remember therefore from where, for whence thou art fallen. This church was way up, so supreme in, in the New Testament. Glorious church. And Jesus is saying, see from where you have fallen. And he's saying, Rick. You know, so many have erroneously taught to the body of Christ that you don't need to repent. Repentance is already a done deal. Let me tell you, repentance is a way of life. In the Old Testament, in Hebrew perspective, repentance is ongoing, engaging way of life with God of heaven. In Hebrew, the word is teshuba. And you know what it means? It means return. When God says repent, so many places in, in, in the Old Testament, you won't find the word repent. You will find the English equivalent, return unto me. Repentance means returning unto God. He is saying return unto me. How many times would you require to return unto him when you are away from the path of righteousness? In the New Testament, the word, Greek word is metanoia, which means again, total change of mind. Turn around. You were eastbound, something happened to you, and now you are westbound. Hallelujah. That's repentance. The Lord is saying to the church, He's saying, Repent, return unto me, for I am your first love. You must return to your first love. You must relinquish every other thing that is sabotaging that relationship with the Lord. Anything that has hijacked your heart. You need to return to the Lord and to the Lord alone. He says, return, he says, repent and do the first works. You know, when you fell in love with Jesus, 
you could not live without him for a moment. If you pondered over anything that was ugly, that was unclean, immediately you repented. You longed to give unto him. You longed to worship him. I remember I always carried a New Testament. Maybe 30 or 40 times a day I used to open up a New Testament. I always needed isolation. Even if in the restroom I, I jumped in, I would start crying. I would start worshipping. I'll have little small spells of worshipping and thanking the Lord. So much rich was your heart in the beginning loving the Lord. And then you became mature. So-called maturity robbed that passionate love for the Lord. The Lord is saying, return to me. He's saying, return to me. Repent and do what you did at first. Just ponder over your life. Remember. You know, it, 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 it must be very vividly etched in your memory what you used to do in the beginning when you met Jesus, when you encountered his love how you lived. You were not so uh, loaded up theologically here, but you were so rich down here. Return to that. Return to that, my dear brothers and sisters. Come back. He's saying, return to me. And then he's saying, if you don't, very stern warning is here. He's saying, or else I will come unto thee quickly. He's saying, I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick. I will remove your candlestick. You know these seven churches are in Turkey. And if you look up in the sky at night and you watch Pleiades, those seven sisters, seven stars, you look upon those seven stars and look geographically on the seven churches in Turkey. They are exactly the same. And you know what NASA is saying? NASA is saying out of those seven stars, one star is becoming dim, dimmer and dim, dimmer by each passing day. Six are shining. Perhaps one candlestick has been removed. Removal of the candlestick is that you're not going to make it in. And the fault, your fault would be that you abandoned loving Jesus of Nazareth. Let's return to him. Let's fall in love with him. Let's love him as we used to do when we first met him. Your first love, Jesus cherishes fondly. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for the impartation of the first love. Mm -hmm. Passion, deep-seated passion. Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts. We fall in love with Jesus madly. And we love him with every fiber of our being. I pray for this anointing. I pray for this blessing for all who are watching and all who will watch later. In the mighty, glorious, wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of glory. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you.